Hello everyone. My name is Ainava Majumdar. A lot of the farmers just call me Dr. A. And I'm extension professor with Alabama Cooperative Extension System, Auburn University. And today I'm going to talk about uh, a dreaded insect pest called yellow margin leaf beetle, which is now a major pest of brassica crops in Alabama and across the Southeast. Yellow margin leaf beetle really belongs to the uh, chrysomelid family of, of beetles. And the way you can identify yellow margin leaf beetle adult is uh, by looking at its wings, the four wings, which are the hardened elytra, and they have the orange or brown color on the edges of that, um, of that wing. And that's why it's called the yellow margin leaf beetle. Um, the eggs are laid often in ground near the plant and soil and there's often clusters of eggs close to the ground and those hatch into larva and the larva and the adult are really what causes the most damage they feed together in large masses and cause uh, a lot of very quick crop damage and then they pupate uh, with this with a light cocoon those those larva yellow margin leaf beetle larva almost look like lady beetle larva except that they don't have the stout spines as in the lady beetles. Also the lady beetle eggs, uh, egg clusters are more upright. Uh, the yellow margin leaf beetle egg masses are uh, more uh, laying to on the ground. There's up almost two generations of this insect per year. And the pest pressure is incredibly high in spring, uh, especially with warm winters. So that's could be another reason why we're seeing rise in Pest pressures is the incredible buildup of this insect uh, in the field and, and the uh, shift in, in, in the weather patterns. Here's another picture of the sequential feeding damage that occurs in the field. So uh, in, on turnips, which is a preferred host, it will start feeding on the leaves. When the leaves are down, it will feed on the stems, almost like a stem borer. And then it feeds on the root, on the roots, the turnip roots, and that can totally destroy your produce. We have seen up to 90% destruction of, of uh, turnip roots. Uh, they're not worth uh, harvesting on a commercial scale. Uh, so the damage can be severe. The buildup of the pest can be pretty rapid over the years if nothing is done. Here's a short video to show the overwintering capability of yellow margin leaf beetle. As you can see, uh, there's numerous larvae. If you take the roots, the turnip roots out, you can see these larvae just come out of the ground and start crawling on the soil soil surface so the buildup is incredible and they can overwinter very nicely um, and rapidly uh, become adults in spring and build up can be fast because they love turnips almost to death we use uh, turnips as a trap crop for uh, research and demonstration so here you're looking at a research and demonstration plot uh, at, in central Alabama, which is a pretty high pest pressure area for yellow margin leaf beetles, where we're using turnips as a tra trap crop, several rows of turnips as a trap crop, planted both sides of cabbage, which is the main crop. So there's the trap crop, uh, which is uh, often planted two weeks ahead, and then cabbages are um, on the right of the screen. And the turnips are, uh, are used as perimeter trap crop. And this is another picture 2017 where we had a pretty high infestation of yellow margin leaf beetle and all those missing turnips that's because of the yellow margin leaf beetle adult and beetles feeding together uh, in spring and this population can be very damaging an overview of some of the results this is from 2019 2020 we uh, tried our best but our, our uh, we had too much rainfall we were not able to spray as often and of course, the, uh, the virus uh, COVID-19 hit soon after we were trying to do the research and uh, we had to stop all work uh, because of the mandates. But anyway, so we are looking at some 2019 data and then I'll show you an aggregate data. So this is turnip defoliation from yellow margin leaf beetles. You're looking at the damage ratings, which is uh, from one to six scale. One is very light defoliation and six is complete defoliation. Uh, we did two treatments 
and these observations are four days after the second treatment. And we included uh, bifenthrin as a conventional treatment that is often used by, by producers. And then we have uh, PFR97, which is a, a, a microbial insecticide, Botanic Guard Max, which is a premix insecticide, organic premix um, with uh, Bavaria bassiana and pyganic or pyrethrin in it. Uh, Monterey spinosad is the um, is, is the home garden version of uh, the expensive Entrust, which was also in the test, uh, and and those are uh, they both have spinosins as active ingredients. And then we had two coded uh, products in the trial. As you can see, um, the uh, yellow margin libels are fairly easy to control with conventional products. But a lot of the um, organic products really struggle, especially if you are late in application. Applications must start at detection, and that's very important to stop the pest. Here's again num uh, the larval counts, and uh, it's very similar and related to the to the leaf damage that we had in the previous slide. And uh, again, uh, the, they're fairly easy to kill with conventional products. And um, I think one of the better products. Uh, were, were the spinosids. The spinosids were uh, more effective than some of the other products. So spinosin and pyganic based products seem to do well. And these are the adults. Now the point of the slide is adults can be very hard to kill. They're very mobile insects. They will often fall down to the ground when you scout or spray. So they, um, they will try to evade uh, some of the spraying and, and they are difficult to kill. Um, overall, so the uh, it's, it's much easier to kill the larvae. This just shows some of the uh, overall results that we, we have seen uh, over the years. And we started out with small plots uh, to where we are now doing these large scale demonstrations and then turning those demonstrations uh, for the trap cropping into, into research and replicated trials. So um, again, we have tried a, a number of organic products and one thing that we have understood is if you get um, caterpillar pressures along with yellow margin leaf beetles, you can start with something like BT based product like Zentari. But if you get a high infestation of yellow margin leaf beetles, then you're, you should start with something like Entrust or Pyganic uh, that do much better job of controlling yellow margin leaf beetle. And, and if you if you're spraying them weekly intervals, you would get uh, a fairly good caterpillar control as well uh, unless you have resistant populations. But overall, if you um, are a farmer and have caterpillars uh, first as high pressure, go with BT-based products and then switch to uh, either the Spinoset or the, or the Pyrethrin products. These are from our demonstration trials. Again, you're looking at the damage ratings. And as it is evident, if we do nothing, damage can be uh, absolutely high, 5.7 out of out of six. So they can that can really whack the the turnips and uh, cause major production losses. And pyganic and and interest uh, or spinosin based products really do well. Uh, we also have seen some good results with PFR 97, but it's been a little inconsistent uh, at this point. Uh, and again, the we we continue to look at this insect weather permitting. And, uh, and getting more confidence in our data. This uh, final slide of overview has uh, some of the chemicals that are, um, are, that are able to control yellow margin leaf beetle. And th this insect does not have resistance to products, so they're fairly easy to control with a lot of the low cost synthetic pyrethroids. Overall, um, we have to remember that weather affects yellow margin leaf beetle populations so make sure uh, you adapt, adapt your IPM plants to the weather conditions. Trap cropping is a very good strategy for small to medium farms, uh, especially with the perimeter trap crops. And you can use the trap crop as, as, a, as a attract and kill strategy. Uh, the threshold for action is very low, one adult per plant. So it, it's basically you have to uh, jump into action when, when you see the adults. University of Florida has done a lot of research on natural enemies, and there are several natural enemies of the uh, yellow margin leaf beetles that need to be protected. For example, spine soldier bugs, 
lace wings and lady beetles, assassin birds. So we have to be judicious with our use of insecticides. And pyganic and spinosin based insecticides seem to be the best options at this point. Um, and as we stated before, use BT based products if caterpillars are ahead of the yellow mounted leaf beetles. So scouting is the only way you can know what's out there in the crop. Just a quick overview of some of the digital resources where we have published our research information on yellow mounted leaf beetle. We have a free online course for farmers. It's called Farming Basics. And we also have a phone app uh, with the same name, Farming Basics, which is free to download on any mobile device where we have information about yellow mounted leaf beetles. We have several YouTube videos on our Beginning Farm Project playlist that are available. And I strongly encourage farmers and researchers to subscribe to the Alabama IPM Communicator e-newsletter. You can Google Alabama IPM Communicator and you should be able to subscribe to it by just entering your email. And in response to COVID-19 spread, uh, we have started some new uh, activities to reach out to our farmers. We are doing uh, virtual farm tours on the, uh, on the weeks. Uh, we also have the monthly webinar series that we do for farmers to spread the information. And uh, we have a weekly Q&A Friday show that we do uh, with regional extension, regional extension agents, extension specialists, and county coordinators working together. And all these are transmitted through the Facebook page, uh, Alabama Extension Commercial Horticulture. And that's a great way to reach out um, producers looking for information. And once again, my name is Anava Majumdar and my phone number and email are on the screen. So please feel free to contact me. And our website for beginning farmers is alabamabeginningfarmer.com. Please look it up, uh, subscribe to our e-newsletter. Thank you very much.